the amount of diseases that are rising as far as endocrine or hormones go. It's like, you know it has to be these products that we're using in our home and we're using on ourselves. Skin is your largest organ. You wanna be careful what you put on it. How did you even come up with the routines that you have created the method to be able to clean your home in less than 30 minutes a day and make it extremely doable? Okay, Becky, welcome to the Mom Guilt Podcast. You are my very first guest, and I planned it that way because I know that your cleaning routines are going to help so many people. They've already honestly changed my life. I've started with your the morning and night routines, and I'm slowly stepping into the weekly routines. Um, so I'm, I'm so happy that you're here to sh share your methods with everyone and really walk us through how you even develop these routines. Yeah. I'm super excited to be your first guest and to be here with you. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. So uh, we have a mutual friend, Alex, that helps us with our brands and our business. And I have a super funny story for you that she said I could tell on the podcast and she so she has been using your methods for years and swears by them. That's honestly how I found you. She had a family member gift her someone cleaning her home. And she was very reluctant about that because she has all of her routines and all of her products that she uses through you. And when the person came to clean her home, it took her over seven hours to clean her house. <laughs> And so the next go round, she said, how would you feel if I just kind of made a list for you, AKA your cleaning routines with all your products. And after she gave her the list and she came back, it took her less than three hours. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so she cut that time in almost over half and it was all because of your routines. And I honestly, this is a strong word. I say that I, hate routines or cleaning, but your methods make it super digestible. And how did you even come up with the routines that you have created the method to be able to clean your home in less than 30 minutes a day and make it extremely doable? Yeah, I came up with it out of, I guess I would say, um, mm, like I had no other, like just getting to that point where you're just so frustrated and overwhelmed. So it came from like a point of overwhelm, I guess would be the best place, best way to put it. I, uh, so when my husband and I were first married, that was back in 2000, we moved into this little apartment. We both had at least two jobs at a time. I sometimes had three or four jobs at a time. I and mean, we were working a lot. <laughs> and did not have a lot of time in our apartment. It was just this little one bedroom apartment and it took me forever to clean it. And I could not figure out, I was like, this is a one bedroom apartment. This is not a large house. It is one, like one floor. There's no steps. There's, you know, like, why is this taking me so long? And I was spending my weekends cleaning. And I, I mean, that was the only free time I had and I didn't want to do that. So that's when I started trying to figure out how to do something different. Um, I actually talked to my grandma because she worked outside of the home and had three girls. And so that was back in the 40s and 50s, which was revolutionary sort of at that point. But I was like, how did you raise kids, have a job, have a house? Like, And my grandma was like meticulous. Um, so I knew she knew what she was doing and she was like, well, I just did certain things on certain days. And I was like, oh, <laughs> that's it. And she's like, yeah, just decide what you want to do. Say this is, you know, this day and that day. And she had these dish towels that said like Sunday and then whatever ironing or whatever it was. She And she was like, I just made these dish towels and I just do these things when you know, on a certain day. And that was how I did it. And so I started thinking, okay, well, maybe instead of trying to clean everything all at once, which is how I was approaching cleaning, like a big cleaning day, what if I split it up during the week? So it didn't, wouldn't take me as long. I will, and 
things were clean kind of more all the time. And that's what I started. I did not start my blog until 2009. So I was working like for nine years doing this routine and I changed it drastically when we moved into a townhouse and then into a house and then had two kids, one kid, two kids, three kids. Like it kind of all changed as those things happened. My last child was born in 2011. So he was the only one that was born while the blog was a blog. And that was like the last iteration of the routine. At that time, I was working another job with my blog. And so I was traveling for the job. I was an admissions counselor. I was, so I was doing a lot and with three kids, a house. And, um, and I was like, if this is working now, when I am probably the busiest I will ever be in my life, (laughs) then it must, I must be onto something. So what I started sharing it in 2009, and other people really enjoyed it, liked it, found similar results to what I was finding. Um, and that's kind of where it's just has taken off. It's honestly been word of mouth and just kind of spread that way. I am someone that enjoys cleaning. So, so it's not that I just didn't want to spend hours doing it. So that was kind of how it was like, I like a clean house and I don't mm-hmm. mind like the puttering around and picking things up and putting things away if I have the time. But generally speaking, I don't have hours I mean, like to clean. I just, I don't, nor do I want to. So that's just kind of how it kind of ebbed and flowed. And now here we are, what, almost, well, I guess 14 years later. Yeah. And, and I, I think that's a huge <laughs> testament to you started it before you even had kids. You did it when you had kids. And then when you were in the busiest time of your life, because I think the common misconception is, oh, you can clean your own home if you're a stay at home mom, or you can clean your own home and do these routines if you have the time. But just like you said, you can actually, this is actually for the person that's actually too busy to even feel like they have the time to clean because it is so easy to follow. And can you give us like an kind of a bird's eye overview of what that would look like, like a, a quick morning routine, night routine, so people can really understand what that looks like? Yeah. I think the first thing with the routine is that you realize that it's a proactive approach to cleaning. So instead of feeling like you're reacting to those messes, and trying to find like the worst part of your house to clean, you just concentrate on the day. And that's where, that's why it works. So um, Mm -hmm. there are four parts to the routine. There are daily tasks. And those are things that I recommend doing daily. (laughs) Um, And they, but you were probably doing them already and you just aren't giving yourself credit for doing them. But it's nice to have that like as a checklist, especially as you're getting started so that you can say, okay, I did that and I did that. And it's super easy. It's making beds. I recommend like not making your kids beds. So if you have kids that are old enough to make their own beds, let them make them. Don't go back and fix it. Just, you know. How do you implement that though? Because I I do. I have a four and a six-year-old. The four might be hard, but then this, the six-year-old, I know he's fully capable of making his own bed, Mm -hmm. but how do you, how do you even start that? Yeah. So you're going to make it with him. So, okay. So it would be, is he like in kindergarten or first grade? Yes. First grade. Okay. So if you want it done in the morning before he goes to school, which I'm, you know, that would be nice. Right. So then, right. As you're getting, I mean, the morning is crazy. My kids are gone by 7.10. I mean, it is, there's not a lot of time for making beds or picking up your room or anything. We don't have, there's not that time. But if you have just a a quilt or a duvet cover on the bed, teach them how to just pull it up, put your pillows in place and walk out the door. It literally takes a minute 
if that. And okay, but I would say like, all right, let's. Are you like when with my kids when I started doing that I was checking on them like are you ready to go did you brush your teeth did you put on deodorant let's check your clothes is that a clean shirt you know like those sorts of things that you're kind of checking yeah. like oh let's make your bed and so you would make it with him probably for a week and then you could say do you think you can do that now it, like let's let's see like I think you I think you're old enough to. Um, make your bed and let's see if you can do it this week. That and that's kind of how you kind of ease into it. Um, but that's always a good place to start. So if you've never done a cleaning routine, never like been into routines, start with the the making the bed. That's you know, mm-hmm. it's right away in the morning. It's something you can check off your list. It's painless. <laughs> it takes a minute or two. Make your bed. Um, then the other the other daily tasks are to pick up clutter. So that's putting things away. So if you took it out, you put it away, that could be toys, that can be mail, like a pile of mail. Um, it could be like clothes on the floor. I mean, whatever is clutter in your home, it doesn't mean that you're cleaning out cupboards and, you know, like in closets and doing that. You're like, we're just talking about that daily clutter. So that's where you want to start. Tidying, yes. Okay, so then the third one is to wipe counters. That kind of encompasses the kitchen too. So like like putting dishes away, washing dishes, putting dishes in the dishwasher, whatever that routine is. You can't wipe wipe down your counters if you don't have dishes put away. So like in mm-hmm. the dishwasher or washed. Um, and then, so then we've got um, doing a load of laundry is another one that I always recommend doing because that's overwhelming is to have like the piles and piles of laundry. If you have that, it's, it, you don't always necessarily know how that is making you feel until you are without it, until those laundry piles mm-hmm. are put away and you're like, Oh, that feels kind of nice to walk into the room and not have a pile of clothes on that chair or whatever, you know, wherever your dumping pile for um, laundry is. Um, but that that's another thing that's going to really, um, really help you as you get into the routine. And then the last thing is to check floors, the last daily task. So that is if you have little kids and you don't have a dog and... <laughs> <laughs> and you've got crumbs under your kitchen table, sweep those up at the end of the after meals, have your kids sweep it up. Um, when I, when kids are really little, I had a, like a mini dust pan and dust brush. They like loved like sweeping little piles from under the tables. Um, but it's just checking the floors. You don't have to vacuum every day. If you want to, you totally could, but you don't have to. It's just like kind of that, like, maintenance like how do the floors look like are they good they're good okay so then those five daily tasks is where i always say to start um super simple once you feel like you have a handle on those then you can move into the weekly tasks and the weekly tasks combined with the daily tasks is where you're going to really see a change in your home and then and that's how you're going to feel the impact of the cleaning routine so the weekly tasks are the things that are assigned to the days of the week. Um, so Sunday is just daily tasks. I just say like, like the whole point of the routine is to not be cleaning on the weekends. So just do those basic things. Um, I mean, you could say, I'm going to take all of Sunday off. And I'm not going to do anything. But then if you come to Monday morning, you've got a pile of dishes in the sink and you know your whole house feels like messy that's not necessarily a great way to go into the week so just do the minimum on on sunday with the daily tasks monday is the bathroom so we clean the bathrooms um i have a bathroom cleaning routine um that will take once you've done it a couple times it will take 15 minutes from start to finish to clean your bathrooms um and that is because we don't vacuum or wash the floors on Mondays. So we're condensing into just the main bathroom, like the sink, the toilet, the shower, the tub, those areas, the mirrors. 
Uh, those areas are what we're cleaning on Monday for bathrooms. Tuesday is dusting. So we dust surfaces. This is not like clearing all your shelves, taking everything <laughs> off, dusting everything perfectly. It is you're running through around your house doing a quick dust and you can split it up. So one week you do one floor. If you have a two story house, you could do one floor one week and one floor the next. You if you have a, a one level house, then you could do half of it one week, half of it the next. You don't have to like don't don't make it too complicated. Like if if it's right. too like if it feels like it's gonna take a long time and you don't want to spend that much time, don't. Like it's fine. Or you can always set a timer for 10 minutes and say, I'm just going to dust for 10 minutes. And then next week on Tuesday, I will pick up where I left off. And then you can, right. you know, that's like, there's like no shame in that whatsoever. It is a hundred percent flexible in that way. Wednesday we vacuum. So we're vacuuming the house, <laughs> you're vacuuming all the floors, the bathrooms, um, everything and doing a thorough job of it. So that's why I only vacuum one day a week on purpose because I'm checking the floors during the week as a daily task. And vacuuming takes a long time. That's probably like vacuuming and washing the floors are the more labor intensive like weekly tasks, but they're definitely, um, they're worth doing and worth doing well. If you do that on Wednesday and you vacuum the floors, you're going to wash the floors on Thursday. So I'm splitting that up to make it easier. Mm -hmm. Some people don't like that because they like to <laughs> vacuum and wash their floors all at once, all on the same day and have it all done. That's fine. There are lots of ways you can split that up too. You could split it up where you have, you could do, um, what I usually will do is on a Wednesday late in the day, I will vacuum like before dinner and then Thursday morning, I will wash the floors so that there's not a lot of time in between where, mm -hmm. you know, there's going to be messes. You could also do um, vacuum and wash one half of your house on Wednesday and then vacuum and wash the floors for the other half of your house on Thursday. So either way, you know, that's a good way to split that up. And then my favorite day is Friday. That's catch all day. That is the day to catch up. So anything that you don't get done during the week. So let's say you didn't clean bathrooms on Monday. You can clean them on Friday. If you still don't get them done on Friday, you could you just do it the next Monday. You're not having to spend time catching up or anything like that. You are simply this is today's task. I'm going to do it. And you're just moving on. It's it's cleaning. I think people make it really like complicated and it doesn't have to be a big deal. Like it's just, you know, like <laughs> it works in, in a simple, simple way to also just to not have it be so um, labor intensive, just to kind of split it up. Typically on a Friday, if everything has gone well, I will add in, um, my rotating tasks or my monthly focus, I'll talk about those next, but I'll add in those like deeper cleaning, deeper organizing tasks or do the catch up. I always will try to do a little bit of um, meal planning on Friday, grocery shopping, clean out the fridge on a Friday too. Mm -hmm. um, I like to do that because then the weekend feels like a real break. Um, and I'm not at the grocery store on Saturday with the rest of my town. Um, and it keeps it, you know, it's nice. I do that too. Yeah. Yes. I will end up at Trader Joe's on Sunday and I'm <laughs> like, why am I here yeah. on a Sunday every single time? But I do love that because there is a little bit of room for grace of if you miss one little thing, it's not a big deal. You can catch up on Friday. Or I mean, if you don't have a ton of things to do on the weekend, you could catch up on the weekend too. So that yeah. that is something that I really love because then I don't stress about, okay, my couple of tasks, if I, you know, something came up, I have to go get the kids from school or something like that, that I'm, I'm like, okay, well, I'll just catch up on Friday. So um, I do love that aspect too. Yeah. And it's, it gives you that, it's just a little bit of breathing room too. Um, 
you could also like, I mean, essentially you can pre-plan it too. So you could be like, well, we're going to be, I'm going to be busy like on Monday and I'm not going to be home. So I'm just going to plan to do bathrooms on Friday. I'm not going to like worry about doing them Monday night when I get home. I know that I will have time on Friday to do that. And then the next Monday, it'll be even easier because there's only two days in between. And, um, you know, maybe then I could tackle like a deeper cleaning bathroom task or something like that. So, um, yeah, that's definitely, I love Fridays. It's my favorite day. Um, and it's also, you can, I, sometimes I'll reward myself by getting everything done. Like mm -hmm. I don't have to do anything. Like I did it all right. during the week. And so I can, you know, there is that like a little bit of personal accountability that I think helps too. And then, yeah. okay, so and then I, our last day for weekly tasks is Saturday. Sheets and towels. We do that on Saturdays. I do that on purpose because everyone's home typically and they can help. So bigger kids can help change your sheets or change their sheets. So they learn how to make their own beds from start to finish, pull the sheets off so that they're not like the kid at college that does not wash their sheets until Christmas break. <laughs> um, so that's <laughs> that's my my personal goal um you can split it up so if you like if you're if your kids if you feel like they don't need to have their sheets washed weekly you could rotate through however many kids you have so that it's not all on saturday you could have them go every other saturday or something you know you can create your own system for that um but it's definitely uh it's it's simple and it's easy. And I mean, that those are the daily and the weekly tasks. I always recommend starting there, getting a really good handle on those. And then when you're ready, then you can add in the rotating tasks, which are deep cleaning items that are on a very specific schedule throughout the year. Some of them repeat monthly, some of them repeat two times a year, some repeat four times a year. But those are those like other things that we know we should be doing, but we don't know when to do them or how often to do them. Mm -hmm. I tell you how to do that. And then um, monthly focus. It's every single month of the year has a different focus. So and I have them set up so that it's very um, like it makes it's intuitive. It makes sense. So right now the october monthly focus is laundry the laundry room november is living areas to get ready for the holidays december is mm -hmm. paper work or an office because it's the end of the year that's a good time to do that january is um, like a whole house declutter etc so it just kind of makes sense with the months and what people are naturally wanting to be taking care of depending on the time of the year so yeah, yeah that's for sure that's it. And I, I love how you let, that's it. Just all of it. But you, it really is super digestible and easy to do. I can attest to that because I've started to do, um, like I said, the weekly, like really honestly, just this morning, because I've ordered all of your, like, uh, the bands and the labels and everything. Aww. And I've been starting to mix my own cleaning products, which I want to get to in a second. Yeah. Um, but it really does take me less than 30 minutes. Like I cleaned my shower this morning in 15 minutes. So it, it really is that easy. And I like how you have it all laid out. And I think you have a membership, correct? Mm -hmm. That really it's all all laid out. And I, so I was a nursing major, which meant that my entire curriculum was planned out for me. And I did that on purpose yeah. because I just need someone to tell me what to do. Even with working out, meal planning, things like that. I just need, if you can give me instructions, I can follow them, but I don't want to come up with them. So you really take the guesswork out of doing all of that, which I incredibly appreciate <laughs> as being a working mom. I have a four and a six year old work full time. And then I clearly have this side business. So, I mean, you really just take the guesswork out of it and I'm super appreciative. So thank you. <laughs> oh, thanks. I love that. Yeah. And it's, um, I think, I mean, it depends on your personality, but I'm the kind of personality where if I could get really excited about something and then I start doing, I buy all the things or I start setting something up. But once I've set the whole system up, then I kind of have lost interest in it. And mm -hmm. it's not, 
interesting to me anymore. I, or I'm kind of sick of it or over it by the time I set everything up. And I think a lot of people are like that, which is why it's really nice to have someone say, hey, this works. Here's what mm-hmm. you need to follow. Just follow these steps. You don't, you're not having to spend any of your energy thinking of what's going to work or how it will work. Mm-hmm. You could, as you follow it, you will like, you'll follow the routine. You can make adjustments because it's flexible as you get into it. But until you have actually started it and tried it, you won't know what those adjustments need to be for yourself. Right. And you don't realize that you need it until this is the perfect example. I never know when to change my air filters because I just don't think about it. And then my father-in-law comes, who is a stickler for all of those things. He comes and visits and he goes, when's the last time you changed your air filter? And I'll say, I have no idea, Louie. And it's because I don't have someone telling me I need to do it, or I don't have it written down or a reminder that I need to be doing it. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And it's those things where, or you forget, like, it's been like when they'll call to, um, like to service our HVAC system. And I will be like, oh, I think you were just here. They're like, no, it's been a year or <laughs> no, it's been six months. You know, it's just those things where I have that on, like they automatically come and because we, we have it so that what we have, we can't change them out ourselves. They have to change it. So every, you know, year they come and fix that and do all those things. But it's because, but I, you, as Humans, we have a hard time remembering like that expanse of time is like, oh, really? It's been that long? (laughs) Weren't you just here? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And I actually was listening to a podcast that said, I don't know if this is accurate. I didn't look it up myself, but it was something like we have 70 gigabytes of storage within our brain. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you don't want to store those things that you can just have written down or done for you that you just look at your calendar and say, oh, I need to do X, Y, and Z versus having to actually actively remember it. Because I mean, that storage can be used for way many, way other things, you know? Much more important things too than cleaning. <laughs> yeah, much more important. So I I think you're super unique in the fact that you made something that seems so daunting, so digestible, easy to do, like we've said a million times within 30 minutes a day. But I also think you're so unique because you have come up with products and recipes that you can make yourself. You know exactly what are in the cleaning products. And I quite honestly, was the type of person that used to think clean was woo-woo, toxic, was like not a thing. I was like, oh, people are fear-mongering. That's just like, that's that's not even a thing. It is a thing, 100%. And I have moved towards being way more conscious in the products that I choose. And, and I heard someone say the first things that you should change are the things that you clean your home with. So that's why I was so excited that you have all of those DIY recipes, products, things like that on your website. But can you tell me, because clean is not a standard or the term clean is not a standard. And I think a lot of brands use it to what they're calling now greenwash, Mm -hmm. which is basically brainwashing you into thinking it's a healthy product when it's really not because there is no standard. So what made you start to create your own recipes, products, and how, like, how did that come about? Yeah. In, um, 2005, well, I guess it probably would have been 2006. So my daughter was like a year old. Um, and she used, I, I was very much into bleach. Like I use bleach all the time. I was careful in the house. I only would use it in the laundry room, but I used to teach and I would do like a bleach water mixture and spray down like the tables after the kids left. And like, that was kind of the way that I did things. And, um, she, I had, uh, like a countertop spray. Um, but it it was advertised that you could use it on high chairs and like around your kids stuff, but it was really just bleach water, but in a pre-mixed, um, container. And, um, she sprayed it like perfume like on her chest and on like around her neck and like she grabbed it off the counter and was like spraying it. I was like, 
Oh my goodness. So I like turned it over on the back. I had, I mean, I honestly thought there was nothing because I was, they said, use it on their high chairs and everything. I turned it on the back and it said, call poison control. If it comes in contact with your skin, if it is ingested, I mean, like all these poison control warnings. So I called poison control and they kind of freaked out a little bit about it. I mean, she didn't swallow it, but it was on her skin and they were like, have her drink a, like six ounces of milk or whatever it was. And then put her straight in the bathtub for at least 15 minutes, wash everything off. You know, if, if this happens and this happens and this happens, bring her straight to the emergency room. I mean, it was like very alarming to me because it was sold at for babies, like to use on high chairs and any and, and their toys, anything that they came in contact with that was supposed to be like, oh, now you could they could put it in their mouth. It's safe, you know, whatever. And that was when I was like, OK, <laughs> so, I mean, this is I mean, that's 2006. So we're at I mean, that was all, you know, like 18 years ago, 17 years ago. And it was like there was no there weren't other alternatives at that point. I did not know what to like, what to do or what other products to use. Um, so I started like researching what was safe, like there in there, I couldn't find anything like that, that I felt like I could trust. So I started using Castile soap and water, mixing it up in a bottle and spraying that as and that was my cleaner. Cause I was like, well, I know that this is safe because I know you can brush your teeth with it. You can use it as a vegetable wash. Like it has all these things. I'm it's vegetable based. Like I'm just going to start using this while I'm researching. So I like threw everything out. I mean, I was so mad threw all my stuff out, like, and then just started making cleaners. Now, when I started, I was like, I hate vinegar. It smells terrible. Like I'm not like, I have to come up with other things that don't use vinegar in them, but Vinegar does work really well, which is what, like, I started to realize it's a really, it, it works well as a cleaner. So I am started to use that, add in some essential oils and kind of um, work from there. Now, again, so this is like 2006. I like had started my blog. I mean, this is like just things I was doing. And then I, um, when in 2009, I started the blog and then I started, so I was sharing my cleaning routine and I was sharing my recipes and like DIYs. And that was where like things kind of took off because no one else was doing that at that time. I mean, now people do it all the time, <laughs> but it was like that people like seeing that. And it was um, like, I mean, it was like a time period where People were like looking for ways to save money. They were looking for things that were cleaner. I mean, it was kind of similar to how things are today. Um, but then, <laughs> so then I wrote a book in 2013 and it was, it's 150 recipes. I was actually approached to write the book because of all the recipes I had shared on my blog. And then, um, and I've written four books total. The third book is all about greenwashing, clean, like what people, what brands will say um, to make you think that things are safe, ingredients to avoid, all of that stuff. So I've done a ton of research, you know, beyond that. But your cleaning products and laundry products, those are the top two places. I actually say like start in the laundry room because those go on our bodies. Like you sleep with, you know, mm -hmm. your sheets, your clothes, any of those chemicals absorb right into your skin too, like the fragrances and everything. So I kind of, I, I like to have people go like at both of those at the same time, the cleaning and the laundry, because laundry is really important too. But um, since, I mean, I have not had a bottle of bleach in my house since 2006 <laughs> and like nothing terrible has happened. Um, <laughs> like we figured out other ways to effectively clean and disinfect. Um, I have three kids that, you know, have gotten sick, but again, like you can remove germs without um, 
you know, having a biohazard suit on and, you know, there's other ways to approach things that work really well too. And so that's kind of how that's all, uh, you know, transpired over the years, if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, no, totally. And I, it's, I didn't like, I liked the fact that bleach was disinfecting, but I couldn't stand the smell. I think I'm one of those people that is super sensitive because you know, that grout cleaner that literally makes you feel lightheaded when you use it. I don't even know what the brand is called, Yeah. but I recently in the last year or so, um, cleaned my grout in my laundry room and I got done and I was like, I'm lightheaded. Like this cannot, these chemicals cannot be good for you. And not to mention, you know, I'm, I'm a nurse practitioner and I practice in the field of dermatology and I, I cannot tell you the amount of people with atopic dermatitis or eczema that we cannot figure out what mm. is causing their breakouts. And when I finally, when I started to, you know, really look into this type of stuff, I would say, you know, you really need to switch your laundry detergent. You really need to switch the, the candles that you're burning in your home, the things you're spraying in your home, clean your home with things like that. And I'll never forget, I had one particular case. Um, this patient, we had, we patch tested them. They knew exactly what ingredients they were allergic to and it, not even harmful ingredients or anything like that. But they would come in and they would say, Vanna, I'm using everything I'm supposed to be using. I'm not using any of the ingredients, anything like that. And we kept thinking about it. And finally, we figured out that the laundry detergent was not switched and um, a spouse was spraying Febreze in the home. Mm. As soon as they cut that out, all of the rashes stopped. Com I mean, completely stopped, didn't have to be using topical steroids, which I don't you know, we don't love to do that anyways, but I mean, that just goes to show you that yeah. the smallest thing can make a huge difference. So do you agree that if you're thinking about switching, you know, your home to a more clean home, a more conscious home, that the first product should be household slash laundry. And I think that's really the easiest because like you mm -hmm. have a ton of products and there's other brands out there that focus on hey, we have this line that it, it's super easy to change everything all at once. Yeah, I I think, I mean, some people will say, well, but I still ha I have a cupboard full of cleaners and I spent all this money on it and like, I don't want to throw that away. And that's fine. But I would also say like, if you're not feeling good or you don't really understand how this is impacting your health, put them in a box, put them in your garage, switch over to something like simple, like dish soap and water, Castile soap and water with a little rubbing alcohol. I mean, it's like very, like a very simple, all purpose kind of a cleaner. Use that. See how you feel when you clean. <laughs> See, mm -hmm. like, you'll notice that your house will get clean. Um, in you can even use like a steam cleaner. Steam works great for removing germs um, and disinfecting and sanitizing surfaces. There's other ways that you can, like for me, it was the fact that I was afraid of the germs. Like I was like more of like the, on that germaphobe side, not, mm -hmm. not like a clinical germaphobe, but <laughs> like I definitely, that was what kept me from switching you know, before, because I wanted to have that, like, 99.999% of the germs are all gone because I used this. I wanted that kind of a stamp of, on after I cleaned. But mm -hmm. the, in my research, I also found that, generally speaking, like, if you, you, if you're like, let's just say you're using a wipe that says it kills 99.999% of germs. Um, if you would look at it, it only does that if it's completely wet for 10 to 15 minutes. So you mm -hmm. have to like, I mean, you can't even, it's not even working the way that you think it's working <laughs> because there's no way right. that you can wipe a surface and then it's going to stay wet for 10 to 15 minutes. It, it, like you won't find a wipe that actually can do that. So no. it's not even killing the germs, but now you, you have that chemical in your hands from using it. And then on your surfaces, like it's like 
sometimes you just have to kind of like step back and say, okay, let's see what will happen if I switch this or what can I swap to get that. that and that's what I tell my patients too. I'll say, I know this is fun stuff. The day that I have to get rid of all the fragrances, Alex and I were talking about this, the day that we we need to cut out all fragrances, like probably our shampoos are going to stay because we don't <laughs> want to switch those. But what I tell people when I say, you know, your detergent can't be scented, it can't be, you can't have the good scented deodorant, body washes, cut it out. Just like you said, don't get rid of your stuff. Cut it out for two weeks See if your rashes go away, if your itching goes away, and then I would be willing to bet that you're fine to toss those things because you feel much better. And you don't you don't know it and you don't realize it until it's not there and it's not affecting you. Right. Well, and like if you go through like an aisle at like a Walmart or Target with the cleaners, like I used to spend time in those aisles like looking cuz I I like cleaning looking for things and I can't even walk down those aisles anymore because that perfect, that heavy artificial fragrance Mm -hmm. is like, so it's like, it catches my throat. Like it makes Mm -hmm. me feel lightheaded. So I have to like avoid those aisles at all costs, even though a lot of those products are safer, more, you know, whatever, like I still can't go down those aisles and I am not someone that's sensitive. Like I've never, like I have no, like, sensitivities whatsoever but once I took those out now I'm sensitive to it because I'm not used to them anymore yeah uh, totally the same so if you had to say there were one to two things like say someone does want to go spend time on the cleaning aisle Mm -hmm. what what are one to two things that you should absolutely not have in your cleaning products like as far as ingredients go um definitely bleach that's you know that's like my number one um and I know like there's a lot of places that use it I just it's you really need to be careful with those kinds of products for so many different reasons so bleach is one and then like the the fragrance is the other the artificial fragrance I think those are the two things that I steer like completely away from. Uh, I like essential oils. I use them in my products. Um, There are, you can get fragrances that are derived from plants or from plant essences that aren't essential oils, but they're a natural fragrance. There there are ways that companies could be doing this, but they choose not to. Artificial fragrance, like anytime that's on anything, steer clear because that is like a carcinogen and it I mean just I promise you it will come like give it 10 years and no one will be using it anymore well and they're starting to talk about not even a carcinogen but an endocrine disruptor and I start and you start to think and look at the amount of women that have PCOS the amount of infertility and things like that and it's like you there has to be a correlation. You know, I don't specifically know the research behind it. I am going to dive deeper into that for sure. But it's just like if you just sit there and use your common sense and look at the the amount of diseases that are arising as far as endocrine or hormones go, it's like you know it has to be these products that we're using in our home and we're using on ourselves. So, um, and that is, that. it's funny because Every time I go into a store now, and I haven't completely cut out fragrance, it's hard to do. It's so Mm -hmm. hard to do. It is. But but I'm not going to buy anything new with fragrance. So I'll I'll flip it over and it says fragrance or perfume, 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 however you want to pronounce it. And I'm like, nope, can't do it. Yeah. 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 There's always a better, a better way. And sometimes like you can also like look for products. um, Like I'm thinking of a certain, there's a, a safer deodorant brand. Um, And they do use artificial fragrance in some of their deodorants, but not in all of them. So Mm -hmm. I will still buy it because it works well for me, but I always look for the one that does not have, it has the natural fragrance, not the artificial Mm -hmm. fragrance. You know, there's definitely, um, yeah, it's, you, you, you want to be careful. If your skin, if skin is your largest organ, you want to be careful what you put on it. 
Yeah, for sure. And, and I used to not even think about that a lot of hormone delivery vehicles in medicine are topicals. So people that say, oh, I'm putting something on my skin and it's not, you know, it's, um, it's not getting absorbed. Women that are doing hormone replacement therapy, a lot of them, they had just apply it to their skin. So that's something to think about and consider if you're one of those people that thinks that things that you're putting on your skin are not being absorbed systemically. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but to say all that, I, we have covered so much. I'm so thankful we got to cover the piece on a more conscious and a more clean home. So if people want to find more things about clean mama, I don't know if we've even said clean mama, but clean mama <laughs> is your, is your brand and your website. I literally, anytime I'm like, I'm about to go clean my bathroom. I'm about to go clean my laundry room. I literally go to your blog and search just like that keyword. And there's so many so many resources. So if people want to find more things, Clean Mama, and then you have, is it, is it called the Home Keeping Society? Yep. Home Keeping Society is my subscription. Um, and that's where we, in a group, work together on the routine. And um, it's a society, essentially. So ask questions, get help, like chit chat. That, that's kind of where that all um goes down to, but yeah, cleanmama.com is my website. Um, and then on social, it's at clean mama for everything too. And if, if we wanted, cause I know you have this, if we wanted you, a resource that literally has everything laid out for you, all you have to do is cross it out or check it. What would that resource be? That would be the homekeeping planner. That would okay. That would be the and it just went digital too, right? Yep, yep, yep. I have um, and I, it's been digital for a few years um, as well. But this year, like people are much more interested in the digital aspect too. Um, but yeah, you, and I have it bundled. So if you wanted to do, you know, kind of use both, which some people do, um, you can grab that as well. But yeah, the homekeeping planner is like the grab and go. Like, I just want to take this and run with it. I don't need a group. I don't need, you know, anything like that. That's, um, that would be the resource for that. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much for coming on the Mom Guilt Podcast, Becky. And we will definitely put all of this linked in the show notes if you guys need more information. Thanks so much for having me.